Hi folks, my name is Fred Swifel and I am the owner and inventor of a tool that I'm about to show you here. I wear this clip right here on the side of my shafts right here. It's easy and accessible. I take it off. This is what it looks like. You can see the magnets on here on the top and the bottom. They attach to the shoe. And I have the shoe here that's just been shaped and ready to uh, nail on the horse's foot. Attached to the shoe right there. Right here in the 12 o'clock position, doesn't have to be perfect. That's what it's going to look like. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like on the sole of the horse's foot. It goes on like that. There you can see the toe of the horse's hoof is in direct alignment with the shoe. And it's held in place right there. Can't go anywhere. And so we're going to nail the shoe on. I've got the foot right there. And now, because of the toe clip, it keeps it right there. I keep light hand pressure on the toe of the shoe. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to nail the 3 o'clock nail, set that. Then I'll come over here and nail the 9 o'clock nail, set that. And then I'm just going to slip this off, put it over here in my shafts where it's out of the way, and I can finish nailing the shoe. Or I can put the foot down if I want to at that point because it won't move. It's held in place with the two nails. So what I'm going to do now is show you what I can do with two clips on this shoe for different applications. Put one clip on. Now I'm going to take the second clip, put it on the shoe, and what's going to happen here, I'm going to, I'm going to set these on tight, tight together like that. Now, when I put this on the horse's foot, you can see that there is about a strong eighth inch reveal of the horse's hoof sticking beyond the edge of the horseshoe. Now what happens there, we've got stability, we've got more stability with these two clips on there and there's a little bit of the horse's hoof wall sticking out so you can just rasp that off, it's not a big deal but what I'm getting at is if you want more easier breakover using this uh, setting the shoe back for the horse all we have to do is pull these down a little bit. As we lower these on the shoe, you can see more of the hoof wall was exposed. And so for breakover purposes, if you want to rasp off, square the shoe a little bit and rasp this off even with the shoe, you can adjust this height in or out by sliding these clips to get apart or back together again. So now I'm going to demonstrate using these toe clips with a hind foot. Uh, pretty much the same application. I've got the shoe ready to, sh it's shaped and ready to nail on. I bring out my toe clip, put it on the toe of the shoe, just like we did with the front foot, and you can see there it is lined up with the shoe. Now, this being a little bit different shape, we're going to put that on just like the other front foot, and it's the same thing. You can see there the toe of the shoe is lined up with the toe of the horse's hoof, just like that. Now, let's simulate shoeing this horse. We've got his leg coming back down here across my leg, and there's the shoe all lined up. Me keeping my hand on the shoe with the horse should move a little bit. It's still lined up. I easily get down here and set that 3 o'clock nail, come over here, set the 9 o'clock nail like we did on the front shoe, and the shoe is in place. But now there's another thing we can do, which makes it a lot easier on this hind foot. And so what we're going to do now is going to put two clips on this shoe and show you how that's an even better application. This clip, I'm going to move over here to the 2 o'clock position. I'm going to take a second one and I'm going to put it on at the 10 o'clock position. So here we are with two clips, 10 o'clock two o'clock position we've actually got a shoe with side clips. Here's the horse's hind foot. Set that on there and as you can see the shoe is actually locked in place. It's it's sitting there really secure. Same procedure except for one little point. We're gonna nail the shoe on, put it down here and I'm ready to nail the shoe now because of the different position of the clips I'm going to go to this second nail hole here and I'm going to set the nail down to where 
I can only hammer down to the height of this clip without hitting it. So I'm going to set it that far. When it gets that far, take this off, get rid of it. Then I can set that nail completely. And then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing with the second hole. Hammer that nail in until it gets to the height of this toe clip. And then take that off, put that away, finish that nail, and now the shoe is securely in place. So a point I want to stress is that when you have a plain shoe before you have two nails in the shoe and it wants to slip around, it's, it's a challenge, especially if the horse is moving his foot. With the toe clips on, it's way easier. And with that, that speed, what that can do using these toe clips on every shoe, that speed can, I would say a conservative estimate is that you will put shoe two more feet in the same amount of time. Now, what that boils down to is if you're shoeing a horse for $100, it's $25 a foot. Now, if you're in the same time period able to shoe two more feet, that is $50 more. Two more feet in the same time period. It's almost like working seven hours and getting paid for eight. Now, that number can fluctuate back and forth a little bit. It might go down to $40. It might go up to $60 or $70. But any number ahead of zero puts you ahead. So if you're thinking about trying to maximize your income, these, these toe clips, uh, there's no way that you cannot increase your income by using these clips. The cheapest thing in your toolbox and saves you the most money. Now, if you're planning on going to horseshoeing school, or maybe you're in school right now, or if you've done a school or haven't one, done it one at all, when you go to school, the horses that they have there for you to work on are as quiet and docile as any horse you'll find. And there's a reason for that is that because instructor is not able to teach you how to balance a foot, level a foot, or nail a shoe on a moving foot. That's why they need this type of horses. But now when you get home, maybe you're there already, I can promise you, you're going to be working with moving feet and some of these feet will be moving more than others. This clip is your defense for moving feet. There's no way around it. This clip will save you more time with these moving feet than anything else. The expense of this clip is the same as a horse rasp and it lasts you forever. It's a one-time purchase and this will save you more money than anything when the speed is most, most important underneath the horse. This is where this really comes in as the most valuable thing you can be using in your horseshoeing process. The bottom line is you have to get these four shoes nailed on before you get your paycheck. The quicker you get those shoes nailed on, you're paid and you're down the road. You got your pay, you're driving down the road, your competition in the barn next to you, he's over there fighting with that fourth foot trying to get the shoe on because he is not using these tool clips. It's that simple. And all those times vary, but again, this is a huge saver. Work seven hours, get paid for eight. I'm gonna show you this book. This is the manual that we used in horseshoeing school, Principles of Horseshoeing. Uh, and this book was written and illustrated by Dr. Doug Butler. Now I'm not selling the book, but if you read his credentials, this man has literally been around the world in the horseshoeing career industry, farrier science, anything you can think of, he's done it. And in this manual, interestingly enough, on page 206, Doug Butler did a subchapter and it's called Speed in Shoeing. Now, evidently, he thinks enough about speed in shoeing that he devoted part of his book to this. And under that Speed in Shoeing title, he went through and listed 32 ways in which you can increase your speed in shoeing. 32 ways. And then he sums that up in a little paragraph in the end is that if you apply these techniques in your shoeing principles that you will ease and speed up your shoeing process and you'll enjoy your work more. Mr. Butler told me to jump off the bridge with his knowledge I would jump off the bridge. He's that good. There's others as good, but take that advice. Work less and make more money. That's the bottom line. This is what this is all about, and enjoy your career more. Thank you.
If you want to buy this tool, you can go to my website, shootrue.com, S-H-O-E-T-R-U. There's a video on there. You can watch it over again. Uh, this one is the most recent, I think the best. So use these tools. They are your defense in your horseshoeing career. Honestly, it's the best thing you can do, I believe. So thank you for watching.